Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubic. Today I'm going to be unboxing the Diane Tangyun M3x3. So the cubicle decided to send this package over to me. Inside should be a new 3x3 release from Diane. If you guys don't know Diane, they're a cubing company that was most popular back in the early 2010s. Most famous for their Diane Zanchi, which is this 3x3 right here. Came out around 2011, and basically it was a really revolutionary cube for its time, but it definitely doesn't hold up to modern speed cubing standards. Shortly after releasing this cube, Diane stopped making 3x3s for quite a long time, and then back in 2017, they released the Diane Zanchi 2017, which was basically a slightly upgraded version of this cube that again did not live up to modern speed cubes. So now, they've released a new 3x3, which should hold up a little bit better in the modern market. As you can see here, it's called the Tangyun M, so of course it is magnetic. I believe it is their first magnetic 3x3 they've made. So if we can figure out how to open this package, not quite sure. And there we go, finally. That was one of the hardest cube boxes I have ever had to open. Anyway, it looks like we have nice magnetic packaging here. Anyway, I'm really excited to get into this cube because Diane, of course, has not been relevant as a speed cubing company for a long time. So in the back here, it looks like we have a little pamphlet. Let's open this up. Looks like we just have a bunch of algorithms. And then we have a little box that has something in it. There we go. Looks like we have a bunch of extra springs inside of here. So I guess there's a few different sets if you want different tensions on your springs. Anyway, let's get right into the cube here. So let's get the packaging off. And oh my gosh, that... I don't know if you can see that, but that is slippery. There is lubricant all over the outside of this cube. That is ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna have to wipe that off. All right, that's a little bit better now. That reminded me of the old Changshou cubes that you would get, and it just felt like they had dunked it in a bucket of lube and not bothered to wipe it off at all. Anyway, first impressions looking at the outside of the cube, it looks like they have definitely upgraded their color scheme. The old Diane cubes were known for having really dark colors like this. And as you can see, they're a lot brighter now, just like most modern cubes. And at 55 millimeters, it's definitely a little bit smaller than their older cubes too. Peeking into the inside, I can definitely tell that it has a bit more of a modern design to the pieces. It's kind of funny that you can see the magnets just kind of sticking out there on the pieces. Anyway, let's get into my first turns of the puzzle. Ooh, that's interesting. It has a little bit of that sandy feel, kind of giving me nostalgia for old Moyu cubes when you turn them right out of the box. Yeah, that's interesting. It's kind of super buttery smooth and a little bit of a sandy undertone that I'm sure will go away as you break it in. Well, I definitely wouldn't have expected this cube to feel like this. If you take a look at the old Zanji, it's just very crunchy. You wouldn't really describe the turning as super duper smooth. Whereas this cube is just buttery smooth, like I said. But you know, other than that, the turning just feels all around normal for a modern speed cube. The cube is pretty fast. It's very effortless to do a turn like this. Like I'm barely putting any effort into this. It's very stable. It's pretty fluid as you're turning the cube around this. The magnets definitely do help a lot. They're a nice moderate strength, maybe even on the weaker side, but it just makes the cube feel very snappy and responsive as you're turning it. Everything just snaps right into place. You get that nice tactile feeling of the magnets that you get in any cube. But yeah, I'd say this cube is definitely on par with a lot of middle range modern speed cubes. I probably wouldn't choose it over something like a GAN, but if you're a fan of that really buttery smooth feeling, actually this cube is really quiet too. So if you want a really quiet cube, if not to speed cube with, then even just to play around, like maybe to use in public where you want it to be really quiet, I could probably recommend this cube to you. Anyway, let's try and do a real quick solve. So let's look around, do some inspection, and three, two, one, and go. So yeah, I'm very surprised that Diane was able to kind of bounce back after all of these years and finally make a cube that's actually kind of half decent. It's really cool seeing such an old company coming back into the market and utilizing all these new modern features like magnets and all the new design in the inside of the puzzle to make an actually pretty decent cube. The one thing is though, if you are going to get this cube, you're definitely going to have to wipe it down really well, maybe even take it apart and wipe the lubricant off the pieces, because already, just after doing one solve, the pieces are all super slippery again. Let's just do a quick corner cutting test. Forwards, a little over 45. Man, it did that with ease, actually. Let's go line to line. Man, it can actually do that. Uh, granted, the tensions are a little bit loose, so let's try backwards. Do that pretty easily. A little bit further. Yeah, that's actually really good corner cutting. Let's try corner twisting. That is actually pretty easily when a side is halfway turned, so that could potentially be a little bit of a problem on this cube, especially with the looser tensions. You could probably tighten that down a little bit. Let's try just general popping of the pieces. Yeah, that edge piece comes out pretty easily. Tightening the cube overall would probably fix any potential problems. Speaking of popping pieces, let's take a quick look inside the mechanism. That definitely reminds me of a Zanchi edge. As you can see here, this is the edge in the original Zanchi. You see the shape is just pretty similar. You got the torpedo and everything. 
all kind of looks the same, except this one's a lot more rounded. There's a lot more intricate parts to it, just like more modern speed cube designs. Same thing with the corner, it looks very similar to the old one, but with a little bit more modern features like the squared off corners. Those centers also have that big kind of ridge on them that wasn't present in the original cubes, and of course these edges are now a three part design instead of two, so they have this big white plastic part, as well as the corners being four pieces instead of three. It looks like that's mostly to facilitate the placement of the magnets, which strangely are kind of visible on the outside of the piece there, maybe even using like a different piece of plastic to hold them in, so that's a little bit different. But anyway, the inside of the cube looks more like a modern cube than a normal Zanji, which I guess is what we should have expected. Anyway, this was a really interesting cube to unbox. If you're a fan of Dian puzzles, or you like the idea of that really buttery, smooth, and quiet feeling 3x3, then I guess you could buy this cube. It's $22 at thecubicle.com. I'll put the link to that in the description down below. And that is pretty much it for this video. Once I set this cube up and of course clean this gross lube out, I'm not gonna use it as a main speed cube or anything, but it definitely will be fun to use just as a novelty cube every once in a while. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed or found the information interesting, and I'll see you guys next time.